So I think this is how we usually use letters in math, but of course it also depends on the field that you're working with. For example, if we look at letter D, well in calculus, this D will stand for derivative, but in number theory, most likely this D will be for divisors. In this video, I would like to share my list with you guys, which I came up with it myself. And it's just based on my experience, which is in teaching algebra and calculus. If you have any thoughts, you guys can let me know after the video, especially if you have any strong opinion on a certain letter should be in a certain usage, let me know. First, of course, we have the A, B, C, and D. Well, C stands for constants, and then we will just have its neighbors join us as well. So these guys will usually be for constants. And what we mean by constants is that once you write them down, they shouldn't change throughout your work. For example, we can put this down into the general form of a cubic equation, namely ax to the third power plus bx squared plus cx plus d. And you can just work with this. They won't change. x changes, that's called the variable which is coming up at the end, right? And of course, honorable mention, when you see d in calculus, you should be associating that with dx and dy. Coming up next, of course, it's the famous constant, E. Well, it has its own role because it's just that special. As we all know, this right here is default to be approximately 2.718. Ready? 28. 18. 28. What's next? Yes. 4, 5, 9, 0, 4, 5, so on, so on, so on. It's the famous irrational number, the Euler's number. Coming up next, we have F and also its neighbors, which is G and also let's bring the H as well. These guys are functions. And of course, we can talk about the typical function notations, F of X, G of X, and uh, H of X. And of course, we can also talk about F of G of X, G of G of G of X, etc, etc, right? And then next we have this one. It deserves its own rule as well. I, the imaginary unit, square root of negative one. But if you want to be technical, you should say that I is the number so that when you square it, you get negative one. So the imaginary number I. But if you don't want to work with like, imaginary numbers or complex numbers, then if you look at i and then of course its neighbor numbers, I'm going to put j, k, l, m, and n all together. Usually when I see this, they are for the index. And what I mean by that is like the summation, of course. If you look at the sigma summation, uh, let's say i as the index going from 1 to, let's say, n, and then you put on a formula, 3i minus 2. So that's for index, and usually when I see this, I will make sure that they are for whole numbers. And honorable mention, when I see l, of course, usually is for length. The length of the rectangle, the length of a curve, things like that. M and N, they look like whole numbers to me. I, J, K, oh, also the cross product, the unit factors. Uh, I should also write that down. I, J, K, the unit factors, the directional factors, all that stuff. What's next? Oh, oh my God. Don't use O, because it looks like zero, right? But we do use O at this place, though. So this is the only place that I can come up with. The big O, and also the little O notation. If you want to learn more about the big O notation, which is about the growth rate of a function, then a good place for you to go is today's sponsor, Brilliant. They are one of the best websites and apps for math and science, and they have over 60 interactive courses. Although they have been around for almost a decade, they still update their courses regularly. 
Over the past year, they have built a whole new platform for their courses that takes interactivity to the next level. This is from the Algorithm Fundamentals course. As you can see, you get to have hands-on activity while you go through the course. I love recommending Brilliant's courses to my students to help them learn and practice the concept well. They have courses for everyone ranging from pre-algebra to calculus, and now I would like to recommend it to you as well. You can use the link in the description, brilliant.org slash blackpenrepen to get 20% off discount. So go check it out, and thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video, and now let's go back to the video. Alright, coming up next, P, and I will also put down the other ones as well, P. Q R S T. When I see this right here, these right here are for the parameters. And it's not because parameters start with a P. Maybe it's, I have no idea. And what I mean by parameters is that when you're working in a question, right, you just put down one of these letters and then later on it will become the variable. So if you have done some Feynman's technique, then maybe use this, right? That's a parameter. And that's pretty much it. Uh, honorable mention, T, of course, usually most likely is for time, right? And S, S, positions, <laughs> especially in calculus, S of T and things like that. P and Q can be for polynomials, like you can also write it as p of x like so or q of x right for polynomials what's next well we have u v and w when i see this of course i think about the u substitution when we're doing integrals but i think i would like to put down factors first before we talk about the substitutions well, factors, especially in maybe pre-calc or calc 3, uh, you do this a lot, right? But of course, when we use u, it's kind of like the new variable. What I mean by that is just that when we do the u substitution in integrals, you just write u is equal to 5x plus 2, then that's the new variable that you're working with. Likewise for u, uh, for v and w. So the neighbor letters. Lastly, we have X, Y, Z. Oh my God. What are these? Of course, the variables. If you guys think about it, this letter, it's the first letter that kind of freaked out a lot of students because we used to know how to do that 3 plus 5, no problem in like a, like a second grade, of course. But the moment that we see like 3x plus 5x, oh my god, right? Of course, we also have what? The x-axis, the y-axis, and also the z-axis. x, y, z. We do this a lot in Cal 3. Cal 3 is all about 3D. And then Cal 2 is just two-dimensional and one-dimensional in Calc 1, especially if you're talking about the philosophy questions. And of course, you guys all know this, and then I'm going to finish my video with the right hand rule.